get this bag of food out of the tree and we're going to take a look at another peak refuel meal. Oh, that was a close one. All right. Now on the main, oh, I guess, you know, I probably should put my, my mic on the right way. There we go, much better. <laughs> all right, so sitting down when I'm out in the woods, I tend to forget that I need to put all this crap together again, and it drives me bananas. It's a lot of weight to pack into an area, but it makes the videos higher quality, and I know you guys appreciate it, and I definitely appreciate you supporting the content. So uh, the bag I have here is a um, uh, bear preventative bag, or it's a bag that resists bear biting and tearing and there's videos of this thing being mauled by a grizzly bear and the grizzly bear can't get through it it's biting at it it's pulling on it nothing can get through it now the scent is still there so you got to hang it in a tree when you're in bear country because you don't want to have all your stuff everywhere when you come back and if a bear does show up it'll be trying to get to the food and not you so don't keep it in your tent that's why bear bags are very important there's also bear barrels but they're super heavy and bulky and take up about 25 percent of your backpack if not more and it's just blech. and this one's certified by many national parks for uh truly bear resistant it's an insane product i'll leave a link in the description if you guys are needing um a bear bag. I'll also put these giant Ziploc like bags. They're scent bags. I'll put it right next to the link for this bag as well. Um, that way you can combine them. I forgot to do it this trip. My fault. Um, but you put them inside this and then the scent is a lot more minimized and the bag is preventing anything from getting it. Seal it tight though because squirrels and little mice and stuff can climb trees and still try to get themselves in there. So to seal it as tight as you possibly can. But with the scent bags, it'll help even more with that. So fun fact, uh, I'm super tired. I'm drained. I've been hiking around all day today. Um, out here doing a little hunting, having fun as usual. Bam. Peak Refuel. This is the Chicken Pesto Pasta by Peak Refuel. Once again, the links will be in the description of this video. Just click on it. It'll send you to um, a bunch of the different peak refuel meals. I am very excited about this one. If it's anywhere close to the flavor that their other meals have, this should be very good. Um, but I know there's always the first time for everything. So I'm hoping it tastes as good as it looks. Oh crap. Where's my spork? Ah, got it. We're good. Never leave home without your spork. You all know my stove. Um, I love this stove to death. I say it every time I do a meal review and anytime I use it, anytime I have it in a video, I always mention it. That's how much I love this thing. I take it with me everywhere. Even when I'm not camping, this is in my truck all the time. That way if I want to make a meal or boil water or any situation arises, I have a little stove and it's always reliable. So if you want to see that, link is in the description. Also the full review. All right, let me take this off. I know my hair is probably wackadoo right now, but I don't care. So uh, chicken pesto pasta. This has white chicken with ZD noodles and creamy pesto sauce. Super pumped. Let's open this up. Uh, I'm going to boil water real fast. Cut away. I don't think you guys need to see me boiling water. And the water is a boiling. You only need 5.3 ounces of water for this. God, that looks amazing. I, I hope it's as good as it looks. I'm, I always get overly excited and I hate to be let down in this situation because I'm super hungry. Um, also things taste a lot better when you are hungry. Uh, so keep that in mind. Open pouch at tear mark, remove oxygen absorber like usual. Carefully add two thirds cup of boiling water, which is 5.3 ounces and it says it on the back. Stir well, zip pouch close, let stand for 10 minutes, open, stir again and enjoy. Very simple, very easy, very little water needed. It also has a really good shelf life, five years of shelf life. I'll take it. Dun, dun, dun. Always pick up your trash, don't be a douchebag. Never litter anywhere, especially when you're in places like this. Oxygen absorber out. Oh, that looks fantastic. What it looks like is pesto cookie dough with then I'm guessing milk product chunks and pasta and seasoning. So this looks, usually don't see clumps like that. That's interesting, but I'm guessing 
it's going to be delicious. Sitting here talking and the water cooled off just a little bit and I don't want anything to skew the results. It looks like a pesto cookie dough ball. And then, yep, back to boiling. 5.3 ounces of water. Let's pour this in here. Oh, the smell. Oh, oh. Probably doesn't. Oh, don't pour water on a hot stove. Right. I'm hoping I didn't put too much water in there. I think it was exactly 5.4 or 5 ounces of water inside that stove, which means when it boils a little bit, some of it evaporates. All right. Our uh, pesto cookie dough ball is blending. This one you have to stir really well. And always remember, like I've said before many times, get the far edges that we're not missing any good flavor. And then when you're done sealing the bag up, mix it around and massage it with your hands. If it's a cold day, which it's not today, um, you can use it as a hand warmer as well and keep it inside your jacket for body warmth. That way you're not wasting the heat, you're just absorbing it and it helps keep the meal a little warmer while it's cooking rather than leaving it on a cold rock or cold ground. So put it inside your jacket or inside a backpack if it's too hot to hold or have against your skin. Looks like the chicken pieces are breaking up a little bit, but I don't think it'll affect it. Maybe just the appearance, but as long as the flavor's there, I'm okay. Preemptive flavor test. Ooh, this could be good. Seal that up. Massage the edges. Get off me, mosquito. Get off me. Oh, I'm trying to eat and they're trying to eat. All right, let's let it sit for 10 minutes and we'll open it back up. Whoop. All right, it's been 10 minutes. Let's see what it looks like. Oh man, it's still pretty watery. Mm. I'm at about 10,000 feet. For every 5,000 feet of elevation change, you have to almost double the cook time. I hope it stays warm enough. Let's seal it back up and wait another five or six minutes. Freaking mosquitoes, pow! Oh, dead mosquito. Just doing the Lord's work. Mm -hmm. yeah, a little bit better. Yeah. It's a little bit better, but still I can tell I kind of drowned it. It's not, it's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. I almost was certain I maybe added too much water. I can see where if I didn't put as much water in, maybe, I think I put about probably half an ounce too much, maybe a full ounce too much, but it's not so watered down to where the sauce is becoming more translucent, which would suck. I've done that in the past when I first started eating outdoor meals and ugh. Uh, I wouldn't say this is plate worthy. I mean, I can't say yay or nay though on plate worthiness because I did add too much water, but I can tell that the chicken's breaking up, the noodles are breaking up, and judging by what it looks like on the front of the cover, doesn't look like it does in this bag right now. But it does have giant chunks of chicken. The sauce looks great. The smell is fantastic. And the flavor. Mm. Wow. Even with this being watered down, the flavor is incredible. If you were to do the exact right amount of water, you're probably gonna have a little bit more of a pasty, pesto-y sauce behind it, but even with it being watered down. I mean, look at that. Look at that perfect chunk of white, beautiful chicken. The pasta tastes like pasta you would have at a restaurant. It doesn't seem like it's freeze-dried and in a little pouch for years. It just, other pastas and other outdoor meals that have this like spongy, rubbery taste to them. Flavor is fantastic though. It has that smooth, buttery pesto flavor. It's got a lot of those good herbs. And the chicken just feels like someone just cooked it on the barbecue and cut it up into slices and put it in this meal. You can pause the screen right now on the nutrition facts and the ingredients list if you want to. I know it's kind of long-winded in the past, so I'm not gonna keep reading through the ingredients. But the nutrition facts on this is insane. The entire package, because it's a two-serving package, has 64 grams of fat, which is fantastic for your energy in the outdoors, has overall 42 grams of carbohydrates, and overall 43 grams of protein. That's a massive amount of protein. And then a very high level of sodium, which is great for electrolyte replenishment when you're being active at 900 milligrams. So this is the Peak Refuel Chicken Pesto Pasta.
definitely two thumbs up with flavor, two thumbs up for ease of making it, two thumbs up for ingredients that are put into this thing. I can't say it's plate worthy because I can tell the chicken's breaking up, the noodles are kind of breaking up a little bit, but that could be on me for the water issue. Um, it definitely is a little bit drowned, so that's on me. The flavor's there, the ingredients are there, and the quality is there, so it's gotta get two thumbs up. I need to get another one of these and do the water properly. I feel bummed. I'm sorry I let you down. <laughs> Mm. This is hitting the spot. All right. Bye.